With us today, we have Major League Baseball player, Mike Devereaux. <laughs> Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Amanda? Doing great. So great Perfect. to have you here. Thank you. All right. Great to be here. Let's get into it. The reason why you're All here, right. professional, amazing baseball player, uh, World Series champion, MVP. <laughs> Um, wow. but first I, I want to, I did a lot of, I did some research on you a little bit. Um, but, uh, but what I want to talk about is, so you grew up in Wyoming. Yeah. Asper, so, Wyoming. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your, your childhood. Well, um, I'm the youngest of, of four, but we're very close together. So I'm a year apart from my brother, two years from my other brother and three years or four years from my sister. So all of us, except my oldest sister, uh, was born and raised, or born in Wyoming. We're all raised there and uh, played all sports in, in, uh, in uh, high school and junior high. And my yeah. father actually coached my baseball team from the time I was eight, to eight years old up until when I was, I was 16. So we were a baseball family. Right. But it gets so cold in the winter, you can only play baseball three months out of the year. So I uh, got into basketball, football and ran track. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people say, Wyoming, what's up there? I knew nothing else. So uh, I had a tremendous uh, uh, childhood. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it was fun growing up. I had a lot of friends that I still keep in contact with there. And uh, I've, I've, I used to go back there regularly, but I haven't gone back there in the past few years. Mm. So, so you said you had three brothers and one sister, right? Two Were they? And sister. Oh, sorry, two brothers and one um, were they in a sports as well? They were all in the sports. You're all in the yes. Sports. Uh, my brothers sports? and I played baseball together all uh -huh. through our lives. My sister played some softball, but uh, she's more of a brainiac. She graduated from Harvard, so she. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. So, uh, so she was more into her studies. Even though, I mean, we weren't bad, but we weren't quite there. Yeah. Well, so so, uh, so your dad was pretty much was was one of your coaches. And um, yeah. and monumental in, in your training, right? I mean, or yeah, what, were there other, other, other coaches or other people that, was, that were influential? There, in there were other, oh, well, growing up, uh, you yeah, know, there's other dads, there are other dads that were involved. Uh, my father, he was uh, in the military, he was in uh, the Army. Before mm -hmm. he came to Wyoming, he ended up being a, uh, grew up in, in East Texas and was mm -hmm. an electrical engineer. So he ended up getting a job in Wyoming. That's why we're out there. But him, along with some of the other dads uh, that enjoyed the game, enjoyed us being in sports at all times, you know, keeping yeah. us all active. And that's exactly how, how we were as a yeah. family. Now, uh, now you're outfielder and you're amazing batter. I, I know that developing your stance is a very personal thing. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I play softball, but, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not very good. <laughs> I like to think that I'm good. I don't know if the other players on my team think I'm very good, but, um, I know that it is a very personal thing. What, how, what helps you develop your stance or how did you develop your stance for batting? Well, you're right. It is a very personal thing and, it, mm -hmm. and it's hard to try to emulate anybody. So, right. So, yeah. So, I'm just so, thinking, yeah. I just yeah. think a really quick note is that um, I always, you know, because I grew up watching Daryl Strawberry. And so I thought that uh -huh. that was how I was going to, oh, no, it was awful. Awful. That's probably yes. why I'm not very good right he, now. <laughs> he went through, Strawberry went through a thousand stances before he see, before the one that you see. Yeah. So, <laughs> so go on. So, and we all have to do that. We got to figure out, you know, the first thing you have to do is learn how to hit. And the best way, uh, the best, uh, procedure, I guess, of getting your bad head to the ball. And that's why it's a personal thing. How do I have to stand? How do I have to think uh, my, my middle aspect of the game of hitting the ball the, the best way? And so it, it changes. And as, as far as getting to the pro professional level, yeah, it, it changes there too. So it, it, it's never a constant. Yeah. Um, so uh, another thing I, I learned, uh, we're both uh, Sun Devils, ASU. Really? Yes, nice. I went to ASU as well. Yes. So, um, tell me a little bit about what the scouting was like uh, back then, uh, going into into to ASU. Oh well, hold on a second. I do not do, put that back. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, well, 
this is, I don't know how much time you have, but this is a lot. I have a mu- all day for you. It's what you have. In school okay. with your kids. I, um, I want to hear, this is the best stories. These are what people want to hear. So we, we, we were pretty much a baseball family. So um, my father grew up in East Texas, like I said. And I remember we went to uh, the University of uh, Texas at Austin. And I remember we climbed on the fence in center field. It was the nicest baseball field. I'd ever seen in my life, but Arizona State was baseball. Yes. So we all, you know, grew up in Wyoming. Never went to a baseball game at all. Never went to a professional game at all. But we knew Arizona State was the baseball school. So when 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 each of us turned eighteen, my father sent us to Arizona State's baseball camp, and we we're going to go to Arizona State University to go to school to play ball. So my, my, my brother, my brother's two years older than me. When he was 18, he went to the camp. He went down to the camp and did okay, but he walked on to Arizona State. Got lost in the crowd. Ended up transferring to go to the uh, University of Houston. Mm-hmm. My next brother, he went to the camp in Arizona and he went to Arizona State. Got lost in the crowd and ended up going to a, a JC down there. Actually, he was there before I, right before I got down there. So mm-hmm. I turn 18 and I go to this camp and I'm in this camp and there's like six other JCs around, uh, coaches and managers that are helping out with the camp. And one of the coaches, which was uh, Jim Fry, uh, who was the manager of Mesa Community, told me, and I was already enrolled at Arizona State. I was already enrolled at Arizona State because Arizona State. Yeah. He told me, he goes, don't get lost like your brothers. He goes, go to a JC where you won't get lost in the crowd because we weren't getting scholarships. Oh. We were all walking on. Right. And uh, he goes, you don't necessarily have to go to my JC, but don't get lost in the crowd because he said, you're, he said, you're a diamond in the rough. I was like, okay. But if you go to Arizona State, you'll get lost. So school had started on a Monday. I was in a baseball tournament in Wyoming, and I decided that I'm going to transfer to Mesa Community, which I did. So I transferred to Mesa Community before I even started school. And uh, so um, my other brother that was there as a state ended up transferring to Mesa Community also, so we were playing there together. And we ended up going to the national championship and took third in the nation. Wow, from a community school. From a community college. So we went up to Grand Junction, Colorado, took third in the country. And then my brother ended up going to Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. And I'm mad at Arizona State at this time. So now I'm a sophomore. And I'm like, I'm not going to Arizona State. They dogged my brothers. I'm not going there. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm, getting these, uh, I'm getting recruited from all these schools after my sophomore year. And then Arizona State called me and said, we'll give you a full ride. I'm like, I'm there. So, so that, wow! I'm never gonna go to Arizona State. As soon as they yeah. offered me a full ride, I'm like, okay, I'm there. Hey, so by the way, I, I I took classes at Mesa Community College, and it's a great college. I have to, I have to tell you, yeah. Well, because I I uh, I stayed summers, so I could graduate in three years. I stayed summers and took my summer classes in Mesa. So hey, wow, so yeah, we're, we're, we're bodies, yeah. <laughs> We are bonded now. Um, so, so then you're at, in Arizona, and then tell me about what it was like when you were getting scouted from Arizona State. Well, you know, I, I was just about playing the game. That's what I was about. I was just about playing the game. I, it wasn't a situation where, like, oh, I'm going to go pro. You know, this is going to be my – I just loved the game of baseball, and I played. I loved it, and I played. And like I said, when Arizona State, uh, when they gave me the opportunity to play there, and now I'm on scholarship. So they, they, you know, they played guys that were on scholarship. Guys that walked on, they really didn't mess with that much. And, yeah. you know, coming from a junior college, which most players did, come from junior college, so they have a little bit of experience coming in to a, a four-year school, that gave me the opportunity to play. Right. So we had a, a trem- we had the best team in the country. I mean, by yeah. far. We didn't yeah. win it. But, so, so you know, it was it was an easy. Uh, people were going to be watching you. You already were in the spotlight from there. I, right? Yeah, I didn't realize it, but Barry Bonds was on the team. Charles Scott, who played Tom. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, 
I mean, there's a lot of guys. Wakamatsu was still in the game, play, was there. Uh, there's a lot of guys that, that, that played from there. So we were a pretty good team. Now, now you're, you're an outfielder. Did you always play outfield? Or were, did you, were there other positions that you played? When I was in high school, I pretty much, you know, everybody pitched. Right. So I pitched, my brothers pitched, all the other guys pitched. So I played the position of whoever was pitching. So the first oh, base okay. was pitching, I'd play first base. If the shortstop was pitching, I'd play shortstop. And I, I didn't catch very much, even though I did catch, but I didn't catch very much. My, my brother that's a year older than me was, was the catcher. That's why I went to school. But um, I played mainly the infield. And uh, when I went to Mesa Community, uh, when they asked me what position I wanted to play or the position I played, I just said straight up outfield. So I, I knew I wanted to be an outfielder. I didn't even consider wanting to play the infield. Right. I felt that uh, I had some good speed and I love running down balls. And I, I just love being in the outfield, love playing in the grass. Wow. Wow. Let me tell you, let me ask you one other thing. <laughs> one last question about technique. Your throwing technique. Um, did your did your father teach you a lot about uh, your throw, or did you develop that throughout your your schooling and your? I, I developed that throughout my my schooling, and mm -hmm. um, and when I was at Mesa Community, uh, there's a guy by the name of Paul Williams. He's about the same size as, me, as I was, and um, he could throw the ball, and it would it would just stay up. It was just constant on a line all the time, and I was like how do you throw like that? Because it looks so easy the way he threw. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually had an issue with my arm. That was, that was the problem with me. I could run, I could hit, you know, I could field, but my arm was kind of, kind of shaky. And uh, he gave me the best advice I'd ever had when it came to the game of baseball, as far as making it to the big leagues. And he told me, he said, instead of holding the ball like this, hold the ball like this, Keep your yeah. fingers as close together as possible. And this thumb, don't hold the ball like this. Tuck the thumb under. <gasps> that is such good advice. I get caught on my thumb when I throw and I end up throwing down then too. Yeah. And there's so much power if you put two instead of that way. <gasps> right, because it, it slips out of your hands a little bit. So it's almost like kind of wow. So this made the ball spin faster. Uh-huh, yeah. And with the ball spinning faster... But the yeah, ball spinning like, faster. Like your daughter is, 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 is showing us. <laughs> With the ball spinning faster, now it stays up longer. Mm. So now, and the scouts, that just turned the scouts on. From that point on, it turned the scouts wow. on. Wow. Thank you for I had the all example the in the back there. That's perfect. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I'm learning so much now. <laughs> um, so, okay. So uh, next question I have for you is that, uh, you're you're kind of a, a journeyman in terms of the teams that you've you've played for about what five, five teams you played yes. twice twice for the Dodgers um, in the beginning it was your first team and then it was your last team so I know that's memorable then we have the Orioles who you've you played the longest and then you have the Braves which you won, won the 1995 World Series and got the MV, MVP as well during that year. Um, which which team is most memorable to you? Well, you know, from, from living in Wyoming, I had never seen a big league game because Denver didn't have a team at the time. Seattle was way far away, but they didn't have a team. So San Francisco had a team, LA, or it have to go like to Kansas State. There's just no, there's no place to play or sit to watch big league baseball. Mm -hmm. So after getting drafted by the Dodgers, my first big league game I'd ever seen in my life, I was playing right field for the Los Angeles Dodgers in Dodger Stadium. So that was the first game I'd ever seen. And, and as far as, you know, the Dodgers who drafted me and they brought me back at the end, um, uh, you know, Tommy Lasorda, Bleed Dodger Blue. I mean, that was a tremendous experience for me as far as um, Roy Campanella being in spring training as far as Davey Lopes, who actually ended up coaching for the Orioles also. And you had Sandy Koufax, Don, I mean, Don Newcomb. There's so many, so much history there that was incredible that I, I believe that I was blessed to the point of coming up with that organization. And then it came to a point to where they traded me to the Orioles when I was still young. 
mm-hmm. and which gave me the opportunity to play. So they also, with that opportunity to, 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 to learn from all these, these historic players, they also let me go to give me the opportunity to play in Baltimore, which we ended up being the youngest mm-hmm. team in the entire league. So it gave me an opportunity to play. And so playing with Baltimore, I played there for seven years. So I have a, a lot of my hearts yeah. in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of my hearts in Baltimore. Um, 1989 season was the best season there, which was my rookie season. Best mm-hmm. season as far as how the team did. Um, then I ended up going to, uh, when I was a free agent, I ended up going to Chicago. And then yeah, White Sox. Season, like, you know, White Sox, which was fun. Mm-hmm. That's why I had my best year hitting. I hit over 300. I hit right at 300 that year. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I ended up going to Atlanta and so won the World Series in Atlanta. But won the World Series with L.A. also in 1988. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so that's... I was on that team in L.A. in 88 when we won the World oh. Series. Oh, my goodness. See, that's – yes. Yeah, I, I have that. So... I have, yeah, you're there. That was your 80, 87 to 88 year. So that by the end, yeah. that was by the end. Yeah. yeah yes. I, I wasn't – I was an alternate, so I got to travel with the team. Uh, to go okay. to uh, all, which was actually not bad at all. I mean, it was cold in New York. We played the Mets for the uh, National League Championship Series, and so I just hung out at the bar at the hotel and, and watched the game. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey we still hey, on the team. We're still a winner then. Right. Well, sorry, Mike, didn't, you, didn't you and I meet your rookie year at, uh, at the Baltimore Orioles, or were you had you been there a year? I when think it was we, right after my rookie year. I was right after my rookie year in Baltimore because that's when I, I went on that, that Oreo cruise, and that's when we met. Yeah. That was like a yeah. night. That was the winter. Was that the winter of 89? Uh, 89. 89, yeah, winter of 89. Yeah, winter of 89. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my what goodness. Was what was the highlight of that cruise besides meeting the comedian on board? What was the, the <laughs> highlight of what now? <laughs> what was the highlight for you on that cruise besides meeting me? Oh, besides me and you, let me see. I mean, that cruise was pretty fun. I mean, so, so wait, it was an Oriole cruise. cruise. It was an Oriole cruise. That was an Oreo cruise. That's the first cruise I ever been on. Yeah, there's probably two hundred Oreo fans on that cruise. Oh, yeah, was, I see. So it's for the fans to meet the Orioles. Right. And so you go, okay, all right, okay. They like so you get five to go players. on a cruise or something. That's yeah, great. they brought like they brought like five players. There's an envelope on my chair one day, and it said, "You're invited. You and a friend invited to go on a cruise." I'm like, are you serious? Because I've never been on a cruise before. I'm like, really? Is this a joke? I'm about, so I said, yes, I'll go. Not realizing what I was saying. Next thing I know, I was on this big ship. <laughs> and oh that kid on that ship. Oh, my gosh. It was fun, fun, though. That, that cruise was fun. <laughs> tell, yeah, yeah. Tell me one of the, the, your, your best stories while you're in the, major, major, in the majors. Just uh, what, one of the, the funniest or best stories that you, that you have. Uh, with the guys. Well, this, oh my goodness! Which one I know there's I, so many. There's so many. I'll tell you a good one. I'm not a a risky one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all I know, I, uh, one time, um, well, when I got to Baltimore, you know, I knew the players. I, I knew some. I, you know, like I said, I wasn't. I I was excited to play baseball. So when I got the big leagues, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in big leagues. Yes. But when I got traded to Baltimore, there was only one player I knew, which was Cal Ripken. And Cal, oh, can I tell that story? I can't tell that story. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'll tell you this. But Cal, you know, he's in the middle of his, uh, his, uh, his streak, as far as consecutive game streak. And I, I, I did my, my calculation on when he'd beat Lou Gehrig's streak, and it was in seven years. So he had to play every day for seven years. In the seventh season, he would break his record. And I knew after six seasons, I'd become a free agent. So I was like, oh, I'm going to miss it. I won't be around. So six years went by. And in 1995 is when I was a free agent. That was a strike year, too. Strike years in 94. So 95, I was a free agent, and I went to Chicago. So I'm playing in Chicago, and I'm going to miss, like I said, I'm going to miss Cal breaking the streak. So the day Cal breaks the streak, um, we're playing in, Anna, in Arlington against the Rangers, and we had a rainout. 
So I was able to sit in my hotel room, drinking beer, and watch Cal break the record all by myself. And I thought that was pretty cool. And because Cal is, you know, he's one of the greatest guys in the game. He really is. And I mean, he, he is. I mean, I, I got a, I got a great Devro story. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you invited me to Baltimore to come see you play, hang out with you. And it was probably one of the coolest days I've ever had because you let me come to the park and hang out. I met some ball girls. I met, I got to see the batting practice. I got a chance to walk through the whole stadium. And then the game was great. I think you had a kick-ass game. Cal, everybody had a kick-ass game. And then after the game, you, me, Brady Anderson, and – I forget the other player was in your Mercedes Benz driving to a sports bar on the belt, listening to Snoop Dogg, and you were like singing Snoop Dogg driving like a buck ten. And I was just going, we got like a million, we got like several million dollars plus maybe about a hundred grand, you know, counting me in this car. We doing a buck ten down the belt. I don't know what you're talking about. You need to talk a little slower, man. You need to you need to bring it back to like at least eighty. You know, are you doing like a buck ten in your Mercedes? And we were just flying down the road. I never forget that. That's Snoop Dogg's fault. That's Snoop Dogg's fault. <laughs> Let me on the Snoop. <laughs> oh man, I do remember that. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, speaking of what you do, what you don't do anymore, um, you're now retired, right? Yes. So, yes. well, from the from the majors, but uh, but tell me, uh, so what what are you um, you're you're coaching now, right? What are you What are you doing now I, that you're retired? I coached for the past eleven years. Okay. So, so I took a little time off of baseball altogether. Did some real estate and. And after that, I did a little uh, private uh, lessons and private training. Then I got back into the game. So I coached for the Orioles for two years, and I coached for mm -hmm. the Rockies for seven years, and I coached for the Cincinnati Reds for, for two years. Mm -hmm. And last year was the la was last year I coached. 2019 was the last year. Um, and uh, you know what? That, that, that was fun. And it, I was at the, the minor league level. And yeah. uh, my main objective, objective was to, to, to get these guys to, um, to have the opportunity to, to get the same feeling that I had as far as making it to the big leagues. And, right. uh, and you know, it's, it's not easy to get – everything has to go right. You know, it's, you have to be lucky. You have to be good. You have to be – when I say lucky, I mean in things like not getting hurt, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and playing the, you have to learn how to play the game right and uh, and I, my my thrill out of this out of coaching was is watching these guys play so even now today you know I'm not doing any coaching right now but uh, I when I watch baseball there's certain teams I, I like to watch and mainly it's the Colorado Rockies because I was there for seven years and being there for seven years there's guys in the big leagues that are playing that I saw that I that that, that you know that I was coaching when they're 18 19 years old. Oh, wow. And, and it's really fun. And they, you know, they, they see my kids growing up and they play with the kids and all that. And now, now you see them in the big leagues and it's really fun. But with COVID and all that, you know, I, I did some coaching at um, this place called IMG Academy that's out here. That's a boarding school um, that uh, boarding high school, mm -hmm. uh, but COVID shut it down and it's, it's back up and running now. But, but I, I decided just to, you know, hang out with my kids and coach them. I coach yeah. my kids and, and she plays tennis, so. Oh, that's nice. Because I would go outside and he would help me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my, uh, yeah, my mom was a tennis player, and I, 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 she, I grew up with a racket in my hand, uh, but I wasn't oh, as into tennis, like, because she was forced me. So, uh -huh. um, but I, I really enjoy it now. I really do. Um, in terms of, oh, speaking of COVID, question, if you, if you, oh, I need to, my, the sun is coming, like, hitting me here. Um, the sun on my Oh. I'm trying to get away from the sun. I'm like dodging it throughout the whole. <laughs> um, so um, I might get up. And, oh, that's a nice racket. Yes. Nice. <laughs> she's she's all she's all ready. Oh, what? Do, <laughs> how long have you been playing tennis for? Uh, uh, 
a few, a few about weeks. A month, about okay. A month. Started. I mean, with COVID, it okay. shut everything down. So I'm just okay. okay. I'm just gonna close this a little bit. So my friend started to play tennis, and then my mom asked me if I wanted to play, so I started playing. We told her I she could play. She could play as soon as as soon as it was available because right. of COVID. Well, well, okay. So speaking speaking of COVID, um, I mean, if you were playing today, would you would you uh, consider playing, or, or would you opt out for this season? Wow, that you know, is, is, that's that's a tough call. That that's really a tough call, and I I I don't know. I'd have to you know, it it'd be a decision that a family decision with with the wife, and mm -hmm. uh, just to figure it out from that aspect of it. Yeah. you know. And just seeing how the rules and regulations are as far as how they're going to handle it. They seem to be doing pretty good. They, they really do. Um, I'm, I'm glad there's at least, and this might be selfish, something for me to watch. Okay. Something yeah. for me to watch. <laughs> and um, so that's the selfish part of it. But I, I love the game to death. So I, oof, that's a tough call. I'd yeah. have to be there to, to, to make that decision. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, what are, what are I, you're like, okay, so I guess, you know, when you're transitioning from, from one career to the next, or even in retirement, you start to uh, miss things and you start to not miss things. <laughs> what, what would be maybe a couple of things that you, you uh, miss about playing? The camaraderie. No doubt about it. I mean, I mean, when you that that baseball family is something that is um, that is very very special. Um, I mean, we used to hang out at the clubhouse after the games for hours and hours. And I remember at one point in my career, I, I probably probably about my fourth or fifth season in the big leagues. There was probably I might even say sixth season. There's probably there there I, I I checked it out. There's at least one person on every single big league team that somewhere along the line I played with on the same team. And that's crazy because that, that's where the camaraderie is. And you, you, you get that because that, it comes with playing either in high school or playing in uh, not in big leagues, but in high school. Well, not in high school because I was in Wyoming. College, um, uh, winter ball, mm -hmm. minor leagues, or big leagues. There's at least one person on every big league team that somewhere along the line of my career, we we're on the same team. And so even nowadays, uh, I mean, I, a few years ago, I did a, uh, an autograph session in, in Connecticut. This is probably like eight or nine years ago. And Vita Blue was there. I don't know if you know Vita Blue. But Vita Blue was a pitcher for uh, the A's uh, when I was a kid. And the A's won the World Series like three years in a row in the early 70s. And um, he was at the tournament. And we sat down, drank Sambuca, and beer and talked and i was like this would have never happened and we you know the camaraderie because he was a ball player i was a ball player so right. it was just like it was just let's do it and, and here's the other one yeah but, uh, <laughs> but hey, wait, what's your like, name what's his name michael here come here my hi I to get off of the game. hi nice to meet you and you say it's another michael yeah that's me <laughs> he's a ball player oh he's yeah a ball it was yeah what what position do you like to play? First outfield, first center field and pitcher. Oh wow. So you got a lot he's, of options. A he's a lefty. Hey. Lefties have rights, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah, so first base yeah, then, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're both lefties. All three you know, boys are I was going to Go say what's yeah. interesting is no, I was I'm left-handed, but everything I did in uh, sports is right-handed. Really? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. Wow. Maybe that's why I was in so, such a good uh, thrower. I should have learned to throw with my left hand instead of my right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, so one of the things you'll miss is camaraderie, which definitely, uh, I can definitely understand that. Do you still talk to um, any of your teammates? Um, I, I do. We, I mean, every once in a while we have the reunions. Mm -hmm. um, we had a 30-year reunion in 19, or in 2019 of my rookie year in Baltimore in uh, 1989. And that rookie year, we came within one game of making the playoffs. That's when we had the youngest team in the league. 
and that's mm-hmm. when I got traded in spring training to Baltimore. And that was probably that 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 was a fun year. And that's pretty much all Baltimore the enthusiasts of baseball, Baltimore, all the fans talk about still to this day is that season nineteen eighty nine. And so wow. we had the, uh, the, uh, the 30th anniversary of that last year. They brought everybody up to the stadium and we we're on the field, went through, it was just so fun. And um, then in uh, 2015, we had the, the, the 25th or 20th anniversary of uh, the World Series in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So, so everybody got back together then. And we have golf tournaments. Uh, we have the Alumni Association with the MLB. Where, where we all get together and we do, um, we do uh, uh, like uh, camps, free camps for all the kids all over the country. And so the, all the players get together then. So yeah, we communicate all the time. I mean, that's, that, that's where the camaraderie is still there. We all keep in yeah. contact. Even guys you've never met before, you know, once they really, oh yeah, I remember, I, you know their names, so instant friends. Yeah. Um, so then what, what are a couple of things that, you're not going to miss or what, what, what things don't you miss about playing in the majors? Uh, I don't miss those nasty split finger fastballs. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, what, the, what am I not going to miss about this game? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I mean, even now when I coached, I miss, I, I you know, I'm not going to miss being away from the family. Yeah, you traveling. Know, like, like I just stopped, I just stopped coaching now, and uh, so, so you know, majority of the summer, I didn't, I didn't have the family around. They come up after school and things like that, and then that, and then that's tough. You know, didn't get to see them grow up, and uh, but, but I don't have to worry about that now. So, so that's one of the things that I don't miss. Yeah. That- the traveling schedule is probably really hard on families. Schedule, yeah. yeah, man. Well, um, is Kimbrough still here or no? I think he's he's on mute. I don't know if he knows he's on mute or not. <laughs> but uh, I was I, in trouble. Yeah. The, <laughs> Am I wrong for drinking my beer? No, not at all. Not at all. Oh. Please drink, drink. And and you know what? We can still we can edit any of you drink, drinking out if you don't want okay. us putting the drink in. <laughs> no, we can. We're gonna. We're going to keep the beer drinking in. Oh, okay. now he's there. He came back just for that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Don't I mean, worry. I'm I'll not, do the I, editing. I'm not, I'm, not ashamed, I'm not ashamed of my beer drinking. Yeah, we, no. we put a few back in our day. How oh, did we? Tell, go ahead, Kimbro. Tell me a story, another story about uh, you, and, you and Mike throw it, throwing uh, one back. Well, I think... Um, <laughs> I, 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 Mike's trying to beat you on the storytelling right now. Try, yeah, yeah. We had a good time on that cruise. I mean, we met out of nowhere on that cruise. Out yeah, of nowhere I, we uh, met. But well, Mike, wasn't the AVP on that same cruise as well? What's that? The, the professional volleyball cruise was the same cruise that you were on? No. Do you remember that? Unfortunately not, no. Maybe it was the week before you or the week after yeah, you. Yeah. All that. I would have remembered. A, I would have remembered a professional volleyball group. Yeah, no, that was a fun week for me. I thought you were on on that week because no. uh, you know they had a uh, AVP volleyball demonstration at uh, one of the beaches, and so they're like, "Oh, come on, Kimbro, you know, why don't you come in and play with us?" They thought, you know, that I probably you know couldn't play, wasn't an athlete, and I was like, you know, they don't know. I, I played like Division three basketball, and I could slam dunk. So. <laughs> I could play a little volleyball, and I was getting up there. I was smashing. They're like, "Bro, where, where'd that come from?" You know, we didn't know comedians were athletes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Um, I think one of the, I think one of the funnest times I had uh, when you came to New York and played the Yankees, which was a big rivals. It was always like you guys in the playoffs, and and that that time the Yankees were really just kind of cleaning it up, and and. If there was any threat for the Yankees going to the World Series, they had to get by Mike Devereaux on the, on the Orioles. And I remember you came up to New York for a game. You gave me tickets. And uh, uh, you were playing right field that game. And, I mean, I, so I thought, okay, the, the ticket you set me out was behind home plate with the wives and the families and all the thing. 
So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go walk all the way around to like the outfield seats and see if I could like, you know, get your attention uh, to let you know that I was like at the game. I mean, there were hundreds of people heckling you like crazy. You didn't flinch. You didn't budge. I'm yelling at everything. I'm like, damn, Mike. And I'm like, shut up, man. I'm trying to ask my boy down there. I'm trying to get his attention. He's like, fuck you, fuck you, you know, you know, New York fans, you know. Oh, like, hey, they said some boy. bad like, things. I mean, they were yelling everything in the book at you, and you were just like, you didn't even flinch. You didn't even turn, you didn't even look. And you couldn't pick my voice out of the crowd because so many people were yelling. I thought you would be able to be like, I'm yelling, Kimbro, Kimbro. I mean, and you didn't even hear Kimbro. You, oh, you, I mean, that's yeah, actually, I a, a, go ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go <laughs> I was going to say, that's actually uh, brings me a really good point in terms of things that uh, you're, you're not going to miss is, I'm from Philadelphia. How was it at the city of brotherly brotherly love? Because we're hardcore sports fans. We're pretty nasty sometimes. I didn't play that much in Philly because I wasn't that much in the National League. Oh. Okay. So I didn't play that much. I did play there, but as a rookie, but not uh -huh. not not enough to really. But New York. But I love that. I love that. Mm, I love when okay. they come down on you like that. I love when yeah. there's enough fans like because if. If, if they're not going to come down on you if you're not, I mean, I mean, you got to live up to that, you know. Right. And they said they said some things in New York that were like laughable. I mean, it was. I mean, but like sometimes you get them back. Sometimes, and I remember. I don't know if I should say this, but anyway, I remember one time. This guy, <laughs> say this, it. This, say it. <laughs> this, this guy. This is in batting practice. It's hard to say things during the game because. This guy screaming on me in batting practice. And he had his girlfriend with him. And she was cute, too. So I walked up, and he's just all over me. And I locked up to her, and I'm like, I know you want to be with me. I know you do. And I'm just talking straight to her. <laughs> straight to her. And everybody, because this batting practice, I'm walking right up. I'm like, he's not even there. I just blocked right. him off, and I just started throwing my game to his girlfriend hard. And she was like, and started smiling and laughing. And it just tore him to pieces. I go, anytime, anytime, I'll be there for you. And I just threw this down on her. And he was like, what in the world? Don't come to me, talking to me, when you're with your girlfriend. You better be right. with your boys. <laughs> I was going gonna... to. Because I'm going to go on, I'm going to go to her. <laughs> I'm not going to go, you know, I'm going to yeah. go to her. I'm going to go to her. I'm not dogging funny. her out. I'll never dog her out. I'll never do that. I'll you know, talk that, him up. That's the same strategy I do with hecklers. Like if a guy is with a date and he's heckling me mm -hmm. trying to show off, yeah. I'll do the same thing. And I'll talk to his girl. I'm like, what's a hot looking thing like you doing with a dipshit like that? <laughs> yeah. <You're right>. well, <laughs> that leads me to my next question, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you ever stare at girls uh, from the field, from the, from the stands? Do you ever, do you ever I mean, do you really? I, I always wonder. Do do ball players actually see that closely? We, we see who we want to see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder that. So, you know, so when you're in amazing, the stands, it, it's amazing how how. And I, I I don't want to be you know giving away secrets here or anything like that. But it's amazing <laughs> how a ball player can go third deck, five five seats in. And, oh, I see her. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> how quick right. it can be. Um, but, I mean, I wasn't married when I played. So my wife is not here, so I can say that. But <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't married when I played. So I had, uh, you know, I, I wasn't doing anything wrong by talking to the girls. But um, I, got, I got a question for you, Mike, real quick. Um, a lot of ball players and a whole lot of sports are superstitious. And I, I, my question is, were, were you a superstitious baseball player? And uh, I did notice that you had a pre at bat routine where how you walked out, where you stood on the, on the warm up on the, uh, the batter's box and on deck, you know, you would rest the bat between your legs while you played with your gloves and then, you know, adjust your hat. But what I noticed is you did the exact same thing every time at bat. 
I, was I, that was that kind of like your superstitious thing, or was I, just like, that was just a, a subconscious way of getting uh, set up for your at bat, and you just didn't know you repeated things, or what? What was that? It was more subconscious. I I, I didn't want to get too into mentally trying to do things that way as far as preparing myself to get in the box or whatever, whether it's fixing my gloves a certain way or whatever. I didn't want to get too deep into that. But I was superstitious in the fact where if I ate this meal and had four hits, I'm going to do it again the next day. So, mm -hmm. so from that aspect of it, um, I, was, I, I was, I mean, the game, it, it's a game of failure. You have to understand how to handle failure. You have to. So when things go good, you got to say, oh, this is why it went good. So you got to figure out a way why it, why it went good. And that's where the superstition comes into it. As far as me being on deck and all that, I never had a routine that I thought through my head to go through. Whether I did something, I probably did the same thing. I know what you're talking about. I was sitting in my bat there and fixed my gloves. I was probably concentrating on the, on the pitcher and dealing with, with that, um, uh, walking up to the plate, um, you know, I always, I always I had in my mind of confidence and I wanted to definitely show that even if, you know, I wanted to show confidence. So I, I knew, I knew going up to the plate, I was going to get a hit. Didn't always happen that way, unfortunately, but I, in my mind, I felt that way. What was uh, one of the, the strangest, I guess, superstitions that you've seen while you're from other teammates or that you've heard of from other players? Oh, Were there any? <laughs> I, I, oh, that's, that's. I'm making you think. I know, I know. I mean, I, I never felt, I never, I never dealt with guys that had like big time superstitions on the, on the team. I know with, with Rick Sutcliffe, I mean, he's the great, one of the greatest guys ever. I mean, this dude was great. But when the day he was pitching, you don't talk to him. You don't talk to him at all. There's another story about speaking of Rick Sutcliffe. I'm, uh, I'm building a house here in Florida. And uh, uh, not the house I'm in now, but this is in the early 90s. And um, my flight gets canceled to get back to Baltimore for the game. So I call up Roland Heeman, who's the general manager. And I said, Roland, my flight is canceled. And he goes, I don't care how you get here, but be here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, am I going to have to charter a flight? I go, what is it? <laughs> I'm thinking in my mind, what does it take to charter a flight? I have no idea how to do it. I'm like, what? And how much is that going to cost? Right. So I ended up uh, catching a flight that got to Baltimore. It landed at 7 o'clock. Game started at 7.35. So we're usually at the ballpark around 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. So I, and I'm flying coach and um, the, <laughs> I'm trying to think how the pilot knew, but anyway, the pilot asked everybody, I feel terrible about this. He asked everybody to stay seated because I was on the plane and I needed to get the game, get to the game by 730. Game started right. at 735. So everybody stayed seated and Cop cars came up right next to the plane. I got off the plane, got on these, I got in these cop cars, officers, uh, patrol cars. They turned on their lights and hightailed me to the game. <laughs> wow. I get, wow. The game at seven, I get the game at 730. <laughs> Sutcliffe is pitching and he has a, uh, 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 malfunction, a, uh, uh, a costume malfunction. So, <laughs> so he, um, he faked it, but I needed a little bit more time. Right. So the game started like seven minutes late because something was wrong with his so-called zipper. Right. And, uh, <laughs> Smart. Right. So I ended up playing the game and all that, and we ended up winning. And oh, wow. uh, we had kangaroo court. And uh, so I get fined in kangaroo court, and I get fined $50. <laughs> $50, that's it. And such wow. a blew up. He, oh, and you can't, when you're in kangaroo court, you can't, no, no swear words at all, no cussing. 
and he threw out, I don't know how many F-bombs. I mean, but it was all in fun. Okay. It was right. all in fun. He ended up owing like over a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and he goes, I'm never coming to another bleeping batting practice the rest of my career if all I have to do is pay fifty dollars. Right. And, oh my uh, gosh. Oh, it was so funny. So but because technically, right, you have to be on that field before the game starts, um, or you cannot play. Correct? Or is that that's Well, you have to be on the roster. On the Okay. Okay. You have to be on the roster. Yeah. So so if you're it's on the roster, you play. Dude, what are you doing? So. Interesting. Yeah, I've had – I just know, yeah, for um, for games that I've had, yeah, you got to be on – you have to be ready and suited up, have your cleats on and everything, or that umph would be like, they can't oh, play. No, no the That's umpires how it was for my <laughs> – yeah, the umpires don't even know who's suited or not. I mean, pitchers can still be in the clubhouse when the game they, – they, oh, okay. they don't monitor it like that. Right, but if they start playing and you're up to bat, then it's like, right, exactly. Okay, but all yeah, right. You just have to be – once you – before the game, the, the, the uh, managers exchange lineups, and if your name's on the lineup, you can play. Got it. Okay, all right. Wow. That's a great story. <laughs> that was – yeah. That was the good old days. Oh man! Nowadays, these guys got it tough. Nowadays, with social media and all that, I I I I don't know how I could do that today. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Would you? Um, I mean, would you be big a big social media person? Would you? I mean, you got to watch I, everything. I, mean, I, I guess it's hard, kind of, not to be, but you have to be careful with it. And these mm -hmm. guys go through classes all the time to make sure that um, you know they're doing everything right. And, and the thing is, they can do everything right, but it can be somebody else that's filming them, that mm -hmm. ask questions, that they're like, dude, get out of my way, man. I'm trying to do something. And then they put that on, you know, online. Right. It's, 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 it's so difficult for these guys. I kind of feel sorry for them because they have, to, they have to isolate themselves so much. After every single game, you know, and I learned this from Cal Ripken. After every single game, I signed until nobody else wanted a, sign a signature. After every game, I did that. Cal did it. Cal's doing it. I should do it too. I did it after every game. And nowadays they have tarps so the fans can't see the players, you know, where their parking lot, where the, where the cars are parked. Plays. Where the, park, where the cars are parked. And that, that's to protect the players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's unfortunate that's why. Plays. Come here. See my dog? Yeah, let's, let's see. I, I think. Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness, is he a chocolate lab? He's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh my goodness, he's gorgeous. Wait, about Wait, is he lighter? I can't know if it's like, is he lighter on the side? He's, he's brown about, and, his, his and beige. Changes. Please, come here. Come here. He's gorgeous. Yeah, he's a pretty dog. <laughs> he's a, he has a, he's a, he weighs about 115 pounds. He just turned three. Oh my goodness. Have you always been a, a a, a dog person well you can be I'll, I'll, I'll always have a dog yeah i always thought i i would have I a, dog. a cat before I, know, I was gonna say i thought i'd always have have a have a dog until i got a cat <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a lot easier traveling except uh, not uh, uh, yeah. when you're trying to do um podcasts because uh <laughs> yeah they love cats love to walk by the screen and just be like hey guys i'm here too i'm here and, yeah. amanda you're my cat and mike you're my dog <laughs> <laughs> hey hey michael are you enjoying uh schooling from your dad <laughs> you paid him to say that <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. It's harder on us than it is on him. But they they do very well. I mean, he understands when he gets on and off. He has, he he does real well. And the Adi, Adi is doing a lot better. Tomorrow we have a tournament. Oh really? A kid pitch tournament. This is first year in kid pitch. Oh wow! Did did you play uh you know little league and like Sandlot or what type of did you do that I, stuff? I played little league. I started when I was eight. Oh, okay. So, and I started with Kid Pitch. Now, he started when he was, like, four. Yeah, so he's, he's way ahead of you. Off the, yeah, off the tee, <laughs> and then Coach Pitch, and then Machine Pitch. Now, this is his first year of, uh, baseball. of real baseball. So now the kids are pitching, but they can't lead off. And next year, they can lead off. 
So, wow. So you guys are able to do that with, with COVID. Like you guys just started, right? Or what, I don't know what it's like in Florida now. We've been, we've been, at first we couldn't be in the dugouts, but they've, they've, they've thrown that out a little bit. Um, but we're outside and uh, the kids have tried their best to stay away, but they yeah. don't. So it, it, and we've had some, some, some kids go through it uh, and that they have, they've had to be isolated for, uh, for 14 days. Um, but un that's unfortunate. Just like the same way that's kind of going on with the, uh, with the NFL and it, it's happening here too, when you have a kid that, that, uh, that gets infected and uh, they, they have to quarantine for, for two weeks. Right. Uh, we've had two boys have had to do that already. And it's, oh my it's, goodness. It's, it's sad, but it's like these guys, they got to do something. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, so in the, in the NFL, so you, you watch football as, as well, I'm sure, right? Yes. Um, and, uh, I, you know, they just had more players um, come down, you know, get infected right. with COVID. And, and some talks are of, of shutting down the league completely for a moment. Because, uh, but what do you do? You have nothing to watch as a fan, yeah. you know? And even if, even if they shut it down for a moment, they're going to end up with the same issue. Up. Yeah. So right. it's almost like even with basketball, you know, they kind of have some issues in the bubble down in Orlando and they, they, they've come out of it and baseball had their issues too. Everybody's going to have their issues. Yeah. Now it's a matter of football's different because if you have your quarterback, uh, like, um, um, Cam, Cam and, uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and pot or, uh, uh Whereas New England, you know, mm -hmm. your quarterback comes out, that's a whole different issue. Now, mm -hmm. if your pitcher goes out, you know, that's only one game. And obviously, right. you know, your first day, whatever. I mean, you can have good guys go out, but there's still a chance you can keep playing the game. Mm -hmm. Football's a little different. Um, right. But basketball's easy to be in the bubble. It's hard for football and, uh, and baseball to have that situation. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win the World Series this year? Well, uh, what time is it? It's <laughs> I know, I know, I, you know, I'm Rays are playing right now mm -hmm. and uh, get the Yankees. So you got the Yankees and or the Rays and Houston. Mm -hmm. So my son's an Astros fan. He loves Altuve and, you know, the unfortunate situation about all the cheating last year, that, that hurt him and, and, mm. and that, that sucked. I mean, I, I felt badly about that because he loves Houston. And mm -hmm. all that, all that went down, but he still likes them, which is cool. I said, "Yeah, that's good. There's nothing wrong. Keep liking them. Keep liking them." And so he wants them. I want the Rays to go. So Rays against Houston will will be good. Yankees have won, what twenty six, right. twenty seven. So they're good. I know the Dodgers are still, still hoping. Well, you know the Do <laughs> the Dodgers haven't won since I was there. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I, I say the same thing about the Braves. They have ones. Okay. So get me back there. Maybe, I, you know, yeah, I think they need to take you back. Right. That's my, that's, that's where, how they should be superstitious. Right. Right. So. Well, uh, Hey, Kimbrough, if you want to do any other, any questions, I know that, uh, I don't want to, you guys are doing great, man. I'm sitting back enjoying this. This is beautiful. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't want to, I want to get all the hard hitting, no pun intended questions in. Yeah. Man, uh, Mike, I want to thank you so much uh, for oh, being with us it. and spending the time. Uh, great stories. Come back again and again and again. All these, with all these stories. I want to, I want to hear more, especially of, of uh, your time with Kimbro. <laughs> Some uh -huh. crazy times. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I, I learned so much and, um, man, I wish you the best. God bless, be Thank safe, you. be healthy and, uh, you have a beautiful family and a beautiful dog. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> hey, hey, I had a great time. I appreciate that. All of this. And, and again, I apologize and, and Hey, let's do it again. Let's do it again. For Go sure. sun devils. <laughs> Absolutely. Sun devils. <laughs> Hi Herb. <laughs> All right, take care, Mike. All right, guys, take care.
Support for this program was provided through the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs, Arts Development Fee Program.